I'm going to create another sign on this building kind of closer to the vanishing point. So keep in mind as you do signage further or closer to your vanishing point, your letters get really squishy. So like they're going to get pretty close together in this one. So my, my words I'm going to pick or this word I'm going to use is going to be shop. Um, I'm going to make like a little window like area with a vertical line then go back to the vanish point and then I'm going to kind of section off four even or four spots that kind of slightly vary in size smaller towards the vanishing point and larger towards the, the corner of the building itself. I like to give myself a little guideline first and I'm going to start with my letters S H and then the O, which kind of gets lost later, and then the P. Like I said, it's going to be a very difficult one to read because it's further back. I'm not super fond of this one, so I'm going to try to go back and just make it stand out. I'm going over my letters each time. My verticals are staying vertical, while my tops of the letter will also go back as well as the bottom ones. The midsection of the letters will try to go back as closely as they can, like with the H and the P and the midsection of the S will go back to the vanishing point on the right side as well. All right, so I'm gonna to try to go to another letter or another set of signage um, on a building that's up closer. So that way I can kind of show you a more three-dimensional set of letters. So here I'm gonna to try to do the block letters. Remember the practices from our perspective um, practice that was worth 30 points. It's kind of a similar approach. So I'm going to kind of frame it off just like a window. And now I'm going to kind of just do bubble like measurements. This way it goes a lot quicker, but just keep in mind as it gets further back towards the vanishing point, like on this part, it'll be smaller. It'll be more narrow. And so I'm going to start with just kind of mapping out my letter A. And of course, I'm going to do art. So this will be my letter R. Keeping in mind that the midsections will also go back to the vanishing point. I try to eyeball it. I might end up fixing that with a ruler once I lightly map it out where I want each letter to go. For all of your lines on this, I do hope that you go lighter just for the sake of sanity because as you get through more and more steps, it's kind of harder to erase your darker lines. So this is where I'm mapping out my midsections, like my A and my R, the little arms that go through them are going back into the, into the vanishing point according to that side. So this on the left side is going to the left vanishing point. So I have my stick letters. I'm going to make these more of a block letter so that way eventually I can take a little ledge off of each letter and go to the op opposite vanishing point here in just a little bit. So block letters are no longer stick letters so I'm making basically them a little thicker. So notice how I went from a stick letter to a block letter. I'm kind of going through my lines just so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'll try to darken it up once I'm happy with that in comparison to the next letter. So the next letter is R.
So each part of the block letters, um, even if it's bold, is going to go back to that vanishing point, especially if it's a diagonal line, like the top surface, the mid surface, or the bottom surface. They'll all lead back to that vanishing point. So this is why I use kind of the sign lines as reference, because then it leaves less work for me to do, and I can kind of use them as guidance. For the R, what I did differently than the A, since I freehand the A, the R I kind of stuck with the stick letter, and then I did an outline, like a body outline, around it. Then I erased the core, um, like the stick letter line that was in the core of that outline. Um, that's one way to do it, and I can show this more when we get into class, but um, it's a pretty simple method if you don't know how to do block letters or kind of bold letters. So now that I'm cleaning up my lines um, and I see the bold letter itself, I'm going to go back over it and then take each of those corners back to the opposite side to have the appearance that these letters are popping off the building. So each corner will now go to the right side since it's on the left side of the building. To have it look like it's coming off the building, it need to go to the opposite side. So I'm just doing tiny little line segments going to the opposing vanishing point on every corner. Now, if it's a corner with on the like interior side that doesn't up, like it go through the letter that does not go back to the other vanishing point. Now to close off the letter I have to go back and use the left side vanishing point for a vertical line. Now I'm going to start on the R with tiny little line segments for each corner that actually is visible to go back to that area. Once again, if it goes through the letter, it does not apply to that vanishing point. Use a vertical line for items that are vertical. Curved ones like this one, I'm just going to have to kind of, you know, make sure it's mimicking the first curve that I made. So the R, because I curved it, the top part will go back to the vanishing point, but once it curves along the side, I have to mimic the previous line. Do not forget the interior section also has to go back to the opposite vanishing point. So. My R has two sides. It has an outer side and an interior side. The corners that are um, that can go back without any interruptions, um, they will go back to the right side vanishing point. And then I'm going to use a vertical line 
and then a line that will go back to the vanishing point. Luckily, those are very similar to the lines previous to it, but I should use a ruler, so I'm going back over and checking my lines. Now for the A. We're going to start with the outside of it, going back to the right side, so any corner on the exterior side, or the far side to the right, will go back to the right vanishing point. I'm doing the interior um, as well. I'm going to use this, the ruler to create my straight lines. And anything that's curved, I'm going to go and make a curve. That mimics the first curve that was made for the block letter. Into your space also needs to use the same method. Make sure it goes back to the vanishing points. I'm checking for each of my lines. So on the interior part, um, the one that's advancing into space, like going back, protruding off of it, I'm going to shade. So it'd be touching the wall of our building. Do the same for each letter. So for my R, I'm doing the same thing. Shading in the ledge of my letters. Now I'm going to shade my letter T the same way I did for my A and the R. 